Yeah, the real name, I actually think, has the best chance to start for the Steelers uh, day three, and we'll say beyond. Mm -hmm. If we're going to add the undrafted free agents, it would be Beanie Bishop. Okay. I think he has the best chance just because there's an opening. Are are we going to consider being like the top slot corner starting? Sure, yeah. All right, if if we're going to do that, then I think it is Beanie Bishop because with Watts, we're talking about him potentially being outside, moving to safety. Mm -hmm. I I just think his rule, his best – chance for this team is going to be depth but also special teams yeah and then logan league you're just d-line depth competing with louder milk and liao and montrevious all those dudes whereas beanie bishop like who do we have as our starting slot corner right now right that's legit man that's legit and beanie bishop i know he didn't really play slot at least at west virginia i don't know how much slot he played at western kentucky Mm. but he was west virginia's outside guy he projects perfectly inside into the slot. Yeah. It's just, all right, what does that look like in OTAs and, you know, once training camp happens and all that. But, I mean, it's there. Like, the the mold, the the archetype, the prototype that he is, I mean, it's reminiscent of uh, Mike Hilton mm-hmm. slash like a Cam Sutton. So I think he's like the day three pick and beyond that has the best chance to start early at some point this season. Yeah. Um. I would agree. Because, like I said, Ryan Watts, I think that definitely is more of the safety vibe. The only thing, like I said, with Benny, I think him and Anthony Averett are going to be very similar in terms of what they're going to be asked to do in OTAs and training camp. Dudes that predominantly played outside, dudes that are also on the smaller side for outside, and dudes that are, I think the Steelers are going to try to see, can they play inside? If you also remember Arthur Mallette with the Jets, he played some outside corner there prior to us signing him and putting him at inside with the slot also. Cam Sutton, another guy that started for us at outside, but we know he also played inside. So just in terms of some of that positional flexibility or some of the things that they still are going to ask to see, can they do it? I think that, you know, Benny Bishop and, like I said, Anthony Averett are going to get a chance to compete with that. But if that's the competition for Benny is you're competing with Anthony Averett, who, like we said, man, has come off of injuries, what, like I said, didn't play the past year and a half because of injuries. If that's your competition, I think that his chance is better than, you know, any of these other guys that we're naming. Because like you said, with Mason McCormick, he has to beat out Nate Herbig first and then would have to beat out or wait for an injury from James Our Daniels. Two stars that we've <laughs> given <laughs> some sizable contracts to. Right. And they, 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 they played good, seasons. too. We yeah. got to see both Daniels and Sam I play, play pretty good. I would agree, bro. I would agree. So it's like you got to go that route for Mason McCormick to beat him out. For uh, Ryan Watts, he has to, number one, transition potentially to safety, or he's going to be in this mix trying to compete with Benny Bishop and Anthony Averett for the slot spot, which we And think, I don't like that for Watts. I would agree. I think that hurts him. I think, if anything, he would rather stay at outside corner and compete yeah. there than move into that slot, man. So once again, it's like if he, he's going to stay outside where we already have a – jpj a dante jackson or you're taking them to the safety spot where you still got a minka and a deshaun elliott in terms of just starters right on paper starters unless you think watts can be what's that dude up in buffalo that plays yeah yeah taron johnson unless you think watts yeah. can be like him i see that more as maybe a long-term goal for him as opposed I do to too. his rookie I year yeah i don't see him there week one or starting even week like this season in that role and that'd be a lot yeah because like i said buffalo plays that as their base like they are in that 80 90 percent of the game i don't think we're going to be confident or comfortable or even the staff would be confident and comfortable in ryan watts in that role for that amount just yet because it's a lot that goes with that not only is the coverage part but the communication is real because now you're a pseudo linebacker and nickel corner just depending on the coverage and what they're calling blitzes and stuff but then you also have that tackling part where you gotta like i said it's just different as we've heard pat peterson talk about it we've seen multiple dudes kind of go through it where you go from that outside corner tackling style where it's half man you outside in you can saw guys off it's a lot easier to be aggressive and fire up Versus when you're at that, you know, wheel linebacker, slot corner slot, or even sometimes that's the pseudo walk down safety. And now, as you heard Pat Peterson say, right, hey, man, them dudes is coming straight at you, bro. You don't have anywhere to go. You got to face that thing straight up and you have to do it every single 
time. And we know what the running backs are in the AFC North. We obviously know what the NFL can be at times with attacking corners, right? With outside corners or slots. They're trying to get to that alley to get that one on one. So that's the only thing in terms of like long answer short. Ryan Watts playing in that role like in Buffalo. I do think he has the body type for it though. And that's yeah, the promising part. You gotta get better in coverage. Yeah. Yeah, I can't really think of anyone yeah. else. I, I mean, was like Logan we, Lee. We, I'm, no. I'm going through the undrafted free agents list in my head right now. Uh, the running back from Georgia. He would still have to go past I, I bet Warren. you TG would think maybe he could beat out Najee. Right, but he still have to beat out Warren, though. He ain't beating out Jalen just yet. <laughs> they bet not. <laughs> All right, let, let's see. What about John Ross Plumley? If we if John Ross no. Plumley is starting for us this year, man, we have went belly up. It is bad. Man. Yeah, no. Uh... Who else we got? Jacoby Winman. But I'm like, I like him. But yeah, we, we got TJ Watt and Heisman. You still got Nick Herbig over there too. That's true. Man. Yeah, I like him. I I would like him to be our fourth edge rusher. Right. I think there's there's an opportunity for him to be a fourth edge rusher. Cause that's the difference when you're talking about starting playing significant minutes versus just finding a role. Cause he could definitely have a role. That yeah. fourth rusher, he'll have a role. Man. Yeah, and not just on special teams, like he'll get, you know, probably about ten snaps. 10, 15 snaps defensively in terms of just the rotation of it. Could this Georgia running back make the team? Maybe. It depends on how many running backs we want to keep with Smith. Yeah, because right now we're But it might be tough for him because we already have three. We have a solid three ahead of him. Solid three, but he's the only one who's similar to Najee. We don't have any other back that can do the whole be the battering ram and just keep, you know, that part of it. He's probably more practice squad. Yeah. But that's the beauty of the practice squad, too, right now. You can kind of let him just sit there. I don't think anyone's going to be knocking down the door to sign him off ours either. No. Yeah. Right. Any others? <laughs> what, you want the German? Julius? No. I was about to say, yeah. No. So, Shout out to the I'm German. Saying Beanie Bishop. Yeah. I think he's got the best chance out of all the day three people and beyond. <laughs> he definitely got the best start. matchup. Yeah. Yeah, be a slot corner for us. Yeah, I like his matchup better than anybody that we didn't talk to. Nah. As we're sitting here right now, yeah, you look at what the cornerback room is. That's it. Yeah, he's he'd be competing with That's Anthony saying, Averitt, bro. who yeah. has not really played predominantly slot in his career. And or has been really even been that year. good. Right, yeah, yeah, and was out all of 2023. Nah. I would like Bishop's chances. It'd nah. be a great story. It's weird because... I like Bishop. I've heard his interviews. He feels like a stealer. But then the other side of me is thinking, like, whoa, we're uh, relying on an undrafted rookie for mm-hmm. significant snaps. Mm-hmm. In his a rookie year, like, position too. What? Where does that leave us? Like, what does that tell us about our defense? And I now I still think the defense is gonna be really good, but all thirty-one teams. I guess even 32 because we didn't draft him either. I was going to say, like, right. for this dude to be a, a starting slot corner or playing significant minutes in the slot, like, day one, like, all these teams couldn't have been that stupid to pass on him in the draft, right? I mean, just depending on how you want to look at it, Deke. Just depending on how you want to look at it, man. Now there have been players that have fell, and mm-hmm. hey, you go around and you're just like, how the hell did he fall that far? Tom Brady, Avery, something like you could go down a list. And I would also say, think about even Mike Hilton. Mike Hilton wasn't just undrafted. He was undrafted and released from another NFL team prior to making it to us. But he didn't play like that his rookie year. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Beanie Bishop would be. This would be, be the rookie starter, starter year. Rookie. What, all right, let's see. Yeah, like Cam day one. Sutton, did Cam corner. Sutton start his rookie year? No. Yeah, it took him like two years. Because right, we still had Dupsy right here. Years. Yeah, Willie Gay was still here. <laughs> Hey, just based off the room, he does have the best chance to do that. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Is this a good thing or is this not a good thing now? I don't, dang, D, why you didn't talk to me like this, man? Uh, I think it's a good thing. I, I believe uh, in Beanie. TG will talk him up, too. I, I, I expect TG to talk. TG going to make him sound like, you know, he said a couple of Rob Woodson over here. You know TG going to do it. Yeah, bro. I don't know how they missed on this one, bro. <laughs> you know, he got Zeke. She played... Corner, outside, inside, safety. I mean, put him on offense, play running back too. You want to? He went WU, bro. What you thought? Like, that's how TG going to talk about him. I get it. Yeah. I just don't know if I believe it like that. That's all. But TG, TG going to have it over here. Like, this is gospel, man. Like, oh, I got it. 
I do believe he could play and be good for us. Yeah. Because uh, it's also, two different conversations. I also yeah. Thought the same thing about Pierre. I think that's. I'm almost like oh. learning from my old self and my oh. old takes. I'm, I'm trying to like. Fair. I can see the growth because you were way more heavy handed on Pierre Island. That's yo, stardom, good, and we ain't worried about nothing. I respect it, bro. I like it though. Cause he was he was he was playing a lot better in training camp than he did when the game like actually like started happening. Pierre? Yeah. It happens like that though. Yeah, sometimes. I thought he did good that preseason yeah. too. Like I remember watching him in camp, seeing him in the preseason, like, yo, he looks good. Ultimately, but, I think he Outplayed whatever we got him for. He was undrafted. Was he undrafted? Dude, yeah. was seventh yeah. round pick or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he actually played when we needed him to. Yeah. Has made plays also. Yeah, was special teams yeah. guy. Good depth. Yeah, he was good for us. Yeah, to me, wasn't been... the lockdown corner I thought he could be though. All right. Wasn't deserving of the Pierre Island nickname. Fair, fair. Because I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like. Is Benny Bishop the new version of the James Pierre or even a Trey Norwood at a time where it was a late round dude, whether he was drafted or undrafted, but we knew he did certain things collegially that were exciting. And we could obviously see an area where it's like, yo, man, we think this dude can't come in here and help us out. Like, maybe that's the vibe right now. I mean, you Norwood think Trey was Norwood good he, his rookie year. Seriously. He was flat out good whenever right. he got on the field. They both made Pierre made plays, Norwood has made plays. But I think the difference of what we're seeing specifically for this is, do we feel the same if Noah would have been the starter at the slot spot or the starter at safety his rookie year versus him spot playing yeah. where it's a little bit more controlled, a little bit less exposed to some of that negativity? I just think with Benny, we're talking about potentially you getting out there with no help. You know what I mean? Like you're just – you learn it on the fly. But who else are we going to put there? As it and that's right legit, now? bro. Uh, yeah, unless that's I'm missing something, legit. we yeah. could take one of our outside guys and put them inside. You know, Darius Rush, Corey Trice, maybe we have right. them predominantly outside. We bump Dante Jackson in, mm-hmm. and then it's uh, JPJ on the other outside. Yeah. Unless we just do that, then, yeah, I don't think Beanie Bishop is going to have as big of a role or potentially be right. a starter. But there's nothing to say that we're going to go that route right That's now. That's what I'm least. saying. We don't have any breadcrumbs or signs. Because, once again, depending on how high the pedigree of play that you pull from outside, you might potentially create another issue at that plot, at that spot as well. Because, like we said, as I'm talking corner, this out, though, part of me does think that they they will do something like that and just rotate mm-hmm. three or four of the outside cornerbacks, get yeah. one of them inside and... Maybe, yeah, maybe Bishop won't see as much early time as we're thinking about right now. But, again, the rule and the path is is there for him. It's, yeah. for, it's for the taking. But I could see the Steelers getting versatile and getting creative. Because yeah. I almost think of it like if Corey Trice, receiver too. If Corey Trice lives up, mm-hmm. if he just steps back in as where he was before he got hurt last year, I think it would be hard to keep him off the field. This is my only hesitancy with that. We never saw him in a game. That's true. Because I'm like with Pierre in training camp. Pierre was looking like that, bro. Pierre was looking locked down, locked down. Pierre Island, like all of that. And then we actually got a chance to see if it could do that week in and week out when the games actually mattered. And that was where we saw a little bit of a difference. So with Corey Trice, man, it was dope. The optimism is still hot on him. But just, like, as the former player, I'm just like, yo, I just need to see some type of just game scenario, live lights, the ball in the air, and you just happen to make a play. Because sometimes it just feels different when them lights hit and you got them game jerseys on and that crowd there, referee might give you a bad call, just anything. It's like, how do you respond in those moments? And we just don't have that information on Corey just yet. But, I mean, in terms of the eyeball test, everything else looked good. Yeah. Yeah. But, again, that goes back to why Bishop has a chance. Because That's legit. Definitely legit. Outside of JPJ and Dante Jackson, there's just a bunch of other upside potential corners in the room. Yeah. And I know a lot of them are outside, but still, if the Steelers do go an approach where they think they could rotate the dudes and be versatile with it, then that would eat into Bishop's snaps in the slot. But, I mean, he's he's in that – category of all oh, those yeah. dudes just 
put them in the mix of unknowns. Hey, shoot, the good thing for uh for Benny also is this. We've seen Coach T. He's not afraid to throw him out there. If a dude is capable, if a guy is playing and he feels like that gives him the best chance to win, he'll throw a young guy out there, man. So we've seen that. So with Benny, it's like, man, you know you got the best pathway of any of these dudes. You got the best matchup of any of these dudes. Yep. Take advantage of it. And I'm sure if you're Anthony Everett, guess what you're saying? You're saying the exact same thing. Bro, all I got to do is beat out this undrafted rookie who has predominantly been an outside corner. Come on in here. Let me try to say that y'all like me. So I like this thing right now, man. But it'd be interesting to see what other moves we make. 